when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The Lord is great and is greatly to be praised. And how many know if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, your enemies would have killed you and ate your flesh. But look at somebody and say, but God. Come on, y'all, I still ain't talking in here. Look at your neighbor and say, but God. But God. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to have our opening prayer. Amen. Coming by Pastor Wilson. Amen. Followed by our opening scripture. Amen. By Pastor Justin Chase. And then right after that, we're going to ask you to remain standing as we receive our praise team in that order. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breathe every fetter. Jesus breathe every fetter. And he Thank you. 
and fire. We're going to lift your name up because we, you deserve all of our praise. You've been so good to us. Now, God, you do it for us in this service. And out of the preaching, you might hear, thank you, Jesus. Out of this preaching, you might hear some out of how to hallelujah. Because you've been so good to us. Now, God, you do it for us. We can't forget your name to pray. The glory and the honor shall be thine in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Put them hands together like you in the church of God in Christ. I can put your hands together like you in the church of God in Christ. I'll be reading Psalms 100, verse 1 through 4. It reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God.
tell them, say, neighbor. neighbor. Yes, I got it. Yes, I got Everlasting it. life. Right here at 2020 Port Lock in Chesapeake, Virginia. You still have time to make your way here. Come on and clap your hands for our praise team. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. Let the world know that we're having church. I dare you to open your mouth and say thank you. Come on, y'all ain't saying it right. Let the world know that we're having church. Open your mouth and say thank you. Come on, y'all gotta do it right. This is the church of God in Christ. Let the world know that we're having church on Port Lock. Open your mouth and say thank you. Come on, clap your hands, saints of God. We're getting ready now for our ministry in giving. Come on and clap your hands as the pastor rooks come at this time. God bless each of you that have come tonight. Now, this is the kind of church that I got saved. This, these are, this worship celebration this week is my roots. The saints didn't mind clapping and praising God. Because we knew what the Lord was going to say. And I thank God for being in this great workers' conference, I was telling Dr. Chase, Bishop, I think this is the best. Every round goes higher. And we thank God for our leader, Bishop Hardy, and to his staff, Bishop Crockett, Bishop Chase, Administrator, Assistant Alfred Nicholson, and to all of the pastors, Pastor Joseph and Justin Chase. It's good to be here, all of the pastors that have come tonight to celebrate Jesus. It's good that we're here and we bless God for our district supervisor, Dr. Sh State Supervisor, excuse me. I don't want to put her down, I want to raise her up. I'm just excited because I love church. And I thank God for the queen of this great jurisdiction, Queen Hardy. And to our preacher tonight, Dr. Donald Generals. 
chairman of our elders council. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord. And we want to worship God tonight in the beauty of holiness. God has brought us through. Amen. He has brought us through. And he said, the righteous will not be forsaken. And I'm just so glad to be able to be a part of this jurisdiction because God has some great things in store for us. And I want to get this offering in the spirit of how God has blessed us. Facebook, those of you that are watching, we church here. And we know how to give God the praise. And we want you to continue to just let go and let God have his way while you're there enjoying this service. I have $100 that I want to give tonight. And folks may ask, why are you always giving $100? Because God gave me his best. He gave me his best. From the gutter to the udder. And I can't thank him and praise him enough. And I want those of you who are viewing, you can see the different ways to give. You can cash app it, dollar sign, C-O-G-I-C, Virginia 4th. We're going to be blessed tonight. The ushers are in place, and we want you to prepare your hearts to give on tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to share in this kingdom building work that you have assigned our leader and the workers to give your name to praise to show the world a better way a more excellent way we thank you for every seed that shall be sown and we pray that somebody would be blessed the homeless those who are hungry, those who need food, those who need raiment. Continue to bless the ministries of these churches and your name shall be praised in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. If you give to the Lord, he will give you more to give. Amen. If you give to the Lord, he will give you more to give. The ushers are coming, passing the plate, the kiosk. If you don't have cash, you don't have your checkbook, but you do have your credit card or bank card, the kiosk is right outside. You can give. Amen in this offertory time. Hallelujah. He's so real in my soul. He has washed all of my sins away. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. His love just bubble up, overflows in my soul. Bishop, I'm glad you made the move that you did. Amen, because I got to follow somebody that's going somewhere. Not just a man just taking a walk. And I want to thank God for our pastors. They're so Supportive. Ella Jones has had to leave 
but he left his official offering for Mother Johnson and his official offer for our jurisdiction to prelate. Isn't that wonderful? And we want you to pray for him. He has to go to the doctor. Then he's going to Dr. Jesus. Amen? Amen. What do you want the Lord to say? Well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Come on in. Come on into the house. It's going to rain. Elder, you preach today. You don't have to worry about this church. God is raising up young men that have been qualified to lead God's people to victory. Amen. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get me behind. Victory today is mine. Oh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. you for the seed. We thank you for the sower. Amen. Amen. Administrative assistant Nicholson is coming at this time. Say amen for him. This is the miracle man. Praise God. Thank you, Dr. Rooks. It's good to be here tonight and it's good to be here alive tonight. God's been good. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. How many of y'all love him tonight? I want y'all to think about something. I want y'all to get, you're going to get one praise on right, right about now. Many people have left this world in the last year and a half. But we are still here. I said we're still here. We are still here. My God. And, and, and watch this now. Some of us, some of us had the virus. Now, whether you know it or not, you were on death road. You were on the same road that people died on. Ooh, somebody didn't get that. But God let you live. I tell you, you're on a praise. Come on, he didn't have to do it, but he did. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be alive today. I've been on a lot of death roads. Some of y'all heard my testimony from this guy this morning. I, I remember holding this little guy in my arms and just kissing his forehead and just rocking him to sleep and this guy boy but did he preach today what a word what a word bishop we want to thank you for allowing my son to speak we have a great bishop here and we thank God so much for you bishop even allow me to serve in the role that I'm serving in and I might need to say this right at this junction because a lot of people still call me bishop and they did not consecrate me bishop. So y'all can call me Alfred Lee. And that'll be all right. I'm looking this way because my wife is over there. I love you. And 
And, and listen, I'm not mad about nothing either. I want, I want y'all to know that. Because the truth of the matter is, titles won't get you in heaven. Amen, somebody. And may the work I've done speak for me. Hallelujah. Bishop, we came to help the, the jurisdiction tonight. Uh, Bishop uh, Jonah is not able to be here tonight, but he sent his money. Some of them get happy about that. Sometimes when people don't show, they don't show no money either. But he sent his money to help. And the Richmond South District, along with the Southern District, is anybody here from Richmond South or Southern tonight? I want you to stand. Yeah, I hear some noise over here to my left. Yes, 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 yes. Here's some people here tonight. And thank God for all of you that's viewing my live stream that's a part of Richmond South District and the Southern District. And thank God for that praise team singing tonight. That's the Richmond South District making all that noise over there. Bishop, we have a gift here tonight of $2,300 to help with the offering for the Workers' Conference. God bless. Amen. Bishop Chase is going to come and make the East Regional Report. Come on, clap your hands as he comes. I come to represent the Eastern Region and the Southeastern Region. Bishop in the Bible, in Ecclesiastic 10 and 19, said, Feast is made for laughter. Wine is made for merry. But money answers all things. I got somebody talking to me over here. Out of the southeast region, in the eastern region, where Pastor, Superintendent, Administrative Assistant Dan White, is the regional representative of the Eastern. And I thank you for allowing me to be over the Southeast region. Together we give $2,725. Oh, Lord. Ain't nobody but Dan White. Daystar District. Another one thousand dollars. Let's give God a hand, praise. Oh, praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to our twelfth annual workers' conference. It is harvest time. We have had a time doing this week. But as they said earlier, every round goes higher and higher. And on tonight, we are going to be blessed. That's all I'm going to say. I'm getting ready. Because my superintendent is coming forth. I'm not going to call his name, but he's mm, Solid Rock District. But anyway, on tomorrow morning, <laughs> Bishop's coming to introduce him. But on tomorrow morning, we will be celebrating Women's Day, honoring our saintly supervisor, none other than Dr. Sherry Johnson. <laughs> Amen, and she is somebody. How many of you all already know that James Madison University named a building after our supervisor? something in the fourth. We said in history, history making, and we thank God 
for the first black graduate of James Madison University. Not just black female, but just she's the first African American. Sometimes you gotta take a moment and brag on your own. I thank God for her. All right, tomorrow evening at 5 p.m., we will be having our jurisdictional assembly. Meeting, it will be taking place by way of Zoom. And Bishop is asking everyone, if you hold a license, please, please be present. He's expecting over 300 plus people to be on this call. So wherever you are, if you're driving along, put it on speaker. If you're at work, put your little earphones in your ear, but be on the call. We want you to be present on tomorrow at 5 p.m. Well, it all ends on tomorrow evening, our high holy day when we will be honoring our prelate, Bishop G. Wesley Hardy, Sr. It will be our official day. And we ask you all to please come out and let's have a time on tomorrow night. Usually on tomorrow night, we were black. Tomorrow morning, we will be in pastel colors, women. We're going to look like a garden of beautiful roses and flowers. And Mother's Cabinet will be in white. So come out and participate. And in my closing, every pastor's aide representative, please take care of your pastor. Please give him his pastor's purse. He's giving, doing this offering. Even if he's not here locally, he has already sent in his money or he's giving by way of social media. Please take care of him and give him his pastor's purse. God bless you and thank you. Amen. I come to introduce some and present to others our very own I want you to rise to your feet, everybody in this place. Hallelujah. Clap your hands. Put your beautiful hands together as we introduce the very president of this great fine jurisdiction, the Bishop G. Wesley Hardy. Come on, clap your hands and make some noise in this place. Let the church say hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Dr. Clark. God bless you. We thank God for this second day of in-person, uh, in-person meeting. First night we heard from Dr. Josh Rogers. Did she preach? It was virtual, but my good. I don't know how she could do it with nothing behind them, but she just, she just preached. She, she was good. And then yesterday, the man from Oklahoma City, I know somebody wanted to know who is Jeremiah Jones. I think you know who he is now. I think when he laid out here on, on his floor, yeah, that's him. <laughs> that's him. And then the young man, you know, I, you're right, uh, Pastor Rooks, this thing's going to be all right. Uh, we were trying to figure out how old uh, Elder J. Cal Nicholson was, and I looked at his wife, and she looked really young. I looked at him, I said, okay. He's a young man, but I know Pop was proud today. This young man worked on that scripture I have never looked at that scripture like he looked at it today. And it was such a blessing, such a blessing. And uh, he's talking about intergenerations. Uh, we got to have that reach for the youth as well as the mature. And if you are mature.
two up. Just keep praising the Lord. And tell these, these, these what are you, a millennium or Z? <laughs> Whatever that is. <laughs> keep on keeping on. Amen. He doesn't have any gray hair. I didn't have any either when I was his age. Some of y'all remember, y'all been around a long time. Amen. But God has been good. Hasn't God been good in this meeting? God has been good in this meeting. Amen. I was looking for the old Lassiter. He's around here somewhere. He's, there he is. He's done a tremendous job trying to keep us safe and keep us organized. He and Elder Bobby uh, has worked to make it happen, Elder Bobby Bennett, and uh, taking care of the guests. And I, I appreciate that. I don't have to do nothing. I ain't supposed to do a whole lot. Amen. Dr. Johnson, tomorrow we're going to celebrate you. My God, you look good tonight. That pink is it's, it's, it's saying something. We're going to celebrate this great woman of God who has a building named after her. James Madison said we got to honor her. Amen. And we were so proud, so proud. Amen. And we thank God for the woman of God that has worked so hard for us through the election. I can't say enough about Dr. Katrina Chase. She has been a workaholic. And I want to say to her husband who was cutting his step, you somebody, you, I didn't get elected, but you, you, you the man, you, Three times, is it three or four times? Four times elected to the trustee board of the Church of God in Christ Incorporated. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Amen. Well, the church is going to move on. We lost a drum board member. My friend. My friend, Bishop Lauren Mann. And uh, I understand his service is going to be next Friday. I'm praying that I can get there because he and I go way back. And he represented the East on the general board. We don't have nobody on the East now <laughs> on the general board. You got to go West. So uh, that's where it is. That's where it is. I want to thank God for Bishop Crockett to work the program, to put it together. Him and his great committee, I appreciate him greatly. And I miss, I miss Dan White. I got a text from him, but he's been on my mind. He's been on my mind. And uh, I, 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 he, he just missed. He's my superintendent. I miss him. I miss him. I miss him. I miss him. I love my wife, but let me introduce this fella. But I, don't she look good? I told her that the Lord told me he was turning back the clock. He, he did it for Hezekiah. He can do it for us. Nothing too hard for it. Nothing too hard for God. This young man who worked hard in the election as well. He is a outstanding preacher. Head of the Council of Elders and, and Pastors and Elders. Represents us well. Highly intelligent. Has a beautiful family. Amen. He has advanced degrees and studied. And uh, Don General can represent us anywhere. Amen. Dr. Don General can represent us anywhere. And uh, I'm sure God has anointed him and given him something that we need to hear tonight. And so I don't know what the program.
programs started for, but I know it's about time for the word. And so after this great choir, this us, this this praise team, have you enjoyed them? Amen. Are y'all coming back? Well, get ready. Somebody say, get ready. And after they shall have some, he's going to come and speak to us from the word of the Lord. Say amen for them as they come. Hallelujah. All the way from Richmond South. stage for our church is going to require the anointing of God. Gifts and talents are good. We appreciate them. We thank God for them. But for what God is going to do in this upcoming time for the church is going to require the anointing. So for that reason, would you lift your hand and ask the Lord, Lord, fill me the more with your anointing. Come on, say it like you mean it tonight. I want your anointing. I'm gifted, I'm talented, but I need your anointing. I can preach, I can sing, but I need your anointing. My God, my God. Mm. The song says this. Lord, sing your anointing here. Let it fill our hearts. Oh, oh, oh. We invite your presence now. Let fear and doubt Depart from here, sin, peace, sin, grace within this place. I'll say it again like this. Lord, send your anointing here. Mm.
within this place. The doors are already open. Let fear and doubt. Bye bye fear, bye bye doubt. You gotta go, you gotta go, you gotta go. once again, Lord, that we've come before your people. First, God telling you, thank you for your healing, for your grace, for your mercy. Oh, God, we glorify you now. God, we thank you for every person and every family that's represented here. Send us a word, a word, dear God, that'll encourage hearts, a word that will break yokes of bondage, a word that will make someone say, what must I do? To be saved. Oh God, give us a word. God, we're going to praise you. We're going to magnify you. And as always, God, we thank you for the gift of teaching and preaching. And we claim it now in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Come on, somebody just tell the Lord, thank you. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Okay, y'all didn't catch that. I'll hit that in a second, but first let me give honor to our illustrious leader, the Bishop G. Wesley Hardy Sr. Amen. He is one of the most courageous men that I know. He wrote a book that I read cover to cover. Took me only two days, but I was engulfed in it. I read it over again, and I had the opportunity to even interview him on his book. Did anybody catch the interview online? Did you see that? Amen. I want you to go and get that book. Go look at his journey to healings and miracles, especially if you're a leader, because he's extremely transparent. I felt so encouraged because I go through some of the same things he went through. I'm not going to tell his testimony. Go buy the book. Look at your neighbor and say, buy the book, buy the book. Amen. Go pick up the book, pick up the book. Amen. And we thank God for his beloved wife. I'm going to come back to you administrators in just a second. But when I read his book, I realized how much his queen meant to him. And she has a book out too. Amen. She has a book out too. Will you support our leadership? Amen. Let's recognize the queen of this great jurisdiction, Lady Doris Hardy. Amen. And to those men that I love to walk behind and to serve beside can God can you just give God praise for these leaders the administrative assistance to our bishop Bishop Herman Crockett national trustee member Bishop J.A. Chase Jr. and the miracle man himself Superintendent Alfred Nicholson Superintendent William Dan White in his absence we thank God for these leaders we thank God for these leaders and and, and I've got to mention Bishop Chase's name a second time because he plays a dual role in my life. Amen. I am so fortunate to be able to serve as one of, I got to say that because they're watching online, Bishop. They're watching online. I'm fortunate to serve as one of his administrative assistants. Amen. In the greater Jamaica jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ. Amen. And he trusts me to lead. He has a succession plan in place. And I tell you what I love about him. Whenever he travels, he calls. And he says, General, he, well, he calls me G. He says, G, you got it. But I'll take it back when I land. I'll take it back. I say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I thank God for you, Bishop Chase, and all that you have done for me and my family. Amen. We thank God for these pastors and elders. Amen. Give them a hand. They are so supportive. They have come out to support. We love you. We love you. And to those that are watching us online, we thank God for you. And I dare not forget our saintly supervisor. Let's give Mother Dr. Sherry D. Johnson a hand. Amen. Amen. You'll catch a glimpse of her in the message in a few minutes. Amen. But we thank God for her, her leadership, 
uh, and all she means to so many. Rachel, she is not an only child. Mother had lots of sons and daughters, lots of them. Thank you for, thank her family for, for sharing her with us. Thank Pastor Russell Johnson for sharing her with us. To the great women of God who support this jurisdiction, every district missionary, especially my own, who texted me a few minutes ago said, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you, District Missionary Leslie Lindsay. But we honor all our district missionaries today and to all the missionaries and those who were licensed on today. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Amen. To the Solid Rock District of pastors and elders, and to our missions, we thank God for you. We're a growing, a growing district, and we have more who are ready and uh, to come. All I do is I go around and I talk about Bishop Hardy. Hallelujah. And they say, really? It's really like that? And I say, now come here. I got a different plan on how we do this. And they say, okay, we're with you. Amen, amen. And so we're a growing district. We love you. Thank you all for your support. And I dare not forget that little church that God has called me to pastor and to lead the Perfecting Saints Church of God in Christ. Yes, yes. We are physically located in Suffolk, Virginia, but since the pandemic, we used to have our members just in Hampton Roads, Lady Candace, but now we have members in Mississippi and Texas and Georgia and New Orleans, New York, New Jersey, who are faithful and seeding into the ministry and tithing. I got to figure out how to pastor them. I've been on Zoom conferences with them. Hallelujah. Doing FaceTime with some and Google with others because they got that other phone. Amen. But at least I'm in touch with my saints. Amen. 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 And last but certainly not least, to the young lady that God called me to cover. I got to say that again to all the men who are watching online and who will see this video. God gave her but one husband who sits over her and she supports me. And I thank God for you, First Lady, Lady Tangi General. She is my personal prayer warrior. She has my back. She has my back. Did I call everybody I need to call? Did I do all right? My daughter is here again, yeah, my baby girl. She just celebrated her birthday. Wave, baby. Yeah, she's the baby. Amen. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. Now, I won't be before you long. I know because I bought my timer so I can see how I'm doing. Amen. Can you put it where I can see it just a little better? Are you ready? When I read the scripture, then you start the clock. This is the Kojic church, you know, we had to go through some stuff. Amen. Amen. I definitely want to give honor and deference to the speaker on this morning, Elder J. Kyle Nicholson. Hallelujah. My prayer, my prayer, Lady Battle, is that he left some oil up here for me, that he left a little oil. Hallelujah. 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 Are y'all praying with me? Amen. We're going to be in the book of Matthew, the ninth chapter. This little song was in Bishop's book. It says, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the saith the Lord tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the Savior, the Lord. Saints, I'm so glad that I've learned to trust him. This happened in a pandemic. I found out that Jesus was my Savior and he's my friend. And he'll be there, be there with me. He'll be with you. So Jesus, 
Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him over and over. Hey, Jesus, Jesus. I said, oh, for grace hey, to trust him more. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Now, my mother's watching online. This one is for you, and I promise to preach. When peace like a river attendeth my way when salt like sea billows roll whatever my lot I learned this in the pandemic thou hast taught taught me to say it is well My soul, Matthew, the ninth chapter, verses 35 to 38. Will we stand in reverence to the Lord? Don't put your cloth on yet, baby. Matthew, ninth chapter, verses 35 to 38. We're reading in the New International Version. Thank you so much. The scripture says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For a subject this morning, Supervisor Chase, we're going to take the 36th verse. I want to teach from the subject, the unshepherded sheep. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, the unshepherded sheep. Sheep without a shepherd. Now, if you've signed up for the school of ministry, then you must know I told you how important it is when you stand before God's people that you give them a little background of the text before you just go into it. I told them that it's important that you know a little bit about the author of the text, who the audience is, and since Jesus is speaking in this text, who is Jesus talking to? All right, so, so let's give you that real quick. The author of this particular text is the apostle Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector. Matthew wasn't liked by the people, just like you don't like to pay taxes, and uh, they didn't like paying taxes back then either. He wasn't well liked, he wasn't well appreciated by those because tax collectors in that day, they not only collected taxes for the government, but they overtaxed them to also take care of themselves. Uh -huh. So it was everybody else who paid for Matthew. All right, so they didn't like him too much. But Matthew had an encounter with Jesus. Uh -huh. The Bible actually says here in chapter nine that when Jesus saw him, we're going to talk about how Jesus sees in a second. Uh, when Jesus saw him, Jesus simply said, follow me. All right. Well, Matthew's gospel uh, is unlike some of the others because Matthew is talking to a Jewish audience. And his goal is to prove that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. So what he does that's a little different is he begins his discourse by giving the genealogy of Jesus. 
I know Luke does it too, but Luke starts in Adam, whereas Matthew starts with Abraham. And so Matthew begins with Abraham because he knows how much they revere and they respect Abraham. So he starts by talking about Jesus' lineage. And then he talks about the things that Jesus has done. And by the time we get to chapter 9, he finally talks about his own conversion, about when Jesus saw him. So now you know who wrote the text. Now you know who the audience is. And now we need to understand to whom is Jesus speaking in the text? Uh, who is he talking to in the text? This is an easy text because it says, then he said to his disciples. So Jesus is talking to the disciples. The disciples were those who chose to follow him. The disciples were those who decided to spend some time with the word. Get it? He, in the beginning, it was a word. The word was with God. Word was Y'all caught that? Okay, good. See, Richmond South was with me. Amen. Amen. And, and so what I'm trying to tell you is that if you are a disciple of Christ, then you will spend some time in the word. In the word. And if you choose to follow him, then you can call yourself a disciple. Then that would mean that Jesus is talking to you. Uh -huh. But if, mm, uh, if... <laughs> You have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior if you only follow scriptures that you like. Oh, y'all better talk back to me. Uh, now, look, let me give a disclaimer real quick. Listen, I've been preaching in front of a computer screen for over a year and a half. Uh -huh, and I want y'all to understand something. You see, we had to have a mute button on so that they could hear the speaker. Will you look at somebody that's six feet away from you and tell them the mute button is off? Talk back to the preacher. Hallelujah. So, so if you're a disciple, the text is being written to you. But if you're not a disciple, then the text is being written about you. Hallelujah. It's been written about you, about you. And so Matthew says, listen, Jesus is going through the towns and the villages and he's teaching in their synagogues and he's proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. Let me say it one more time. I said, Jesus went through all the towns and all the villages teaching in their synagogues. And they told me his subject was the good news of the kingdom. Okay, you missed it one more time, Dr. Anthony, my brother. Let me give it again. I said, Jesus was going from town to town, city to city, going to preach at different churches. But he was preaching one message. I feel like preaching real quick. He was preaching one message and the message was simply the good news of the kingdom. It was the gospel of the kingdom. And so it leads me to my first question for you. Uh, don't answer this. This is a rhetorical question. My question is, what are you preaching that will reach the unshepherded sheep? You see, I believe today the reason we don't see people running to Jesus is not because he has changed at all. Because he hasn't. He's still just as good yesterday as he is today. Amen. And our preacher told us this morning that he's not bound by time or by space. Amen. So if you call him, he'll still be there. Hallelujah. But what happens is what are we preaching about that will draw the unshepherded sheep? Ah, uh, you see, our problem is some of us want to preach our personal agendas. Uh-oh. Some of us want to preach our political ideology. Young preachers, some of you want to preach your favorite preacher's message again. Mm. Some folk want to, you caught that, some folk want to preach their opinions. We can't preach our opinions because your opinion is based on your personal experience. And because you and I have a different personal experience, you can't preach to me. The people of God don't come to church to hear you opine. They come to get a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, preach the good news of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And so Matthew goes on and he says, when... He saw the crowds. I got to park here for a second because at my church, the Bible studies have all been about 
Where are some of my members at? Wave your hand. I see you. The Bible study has all been about learning to see people the way Jesus sees people. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. And you'll catch this in the text. Jesus sees people differently than we do. You see, the world sees people on the outside. They see your ethnicity and they treat you according to what they see. <laughs> Women, they see your gender and they treat you according to what they see. They see your materialistic items that you have uh, and they treat you according to the way you see. But Jesus sees us a little differently. And, and he pauses right there and Matthew says, when Jesus saw the crowd. <laughs> the Bible says he had compassion on them. The word compassion means he had some self-pity. Uh -huh. He pitied them a little bit. And why was Jesus concerned? He said because they were harassed and they were helpless. <laughs> now is there anybody in here who had felt harassed every now and then? Oh, y'all not going to talk? Y'all make me work? That's okay. Like I said, I've been preaching. I ain't say I was in the church preaching, but I've been preaching. Since you're going to make me work, I'll go there. Dr. Johnson, we were honoring you earlier. Amen. Because there is a building in your name. But I am certain with everything that's in me that when you were on that campus as the only one who looked like us, who had melanin like we had, I can tell you she would testify that she had been harassed and at times felt helpless. Okay, y'all not with me yet? All right, no problem. I'll keep preaching. Women, women, women. There's a whole movement named after you. It's called the Me Too movement. And it's made up of all the women who had been harassed and felt helpless. Oh, y'all not talking yet? Okay, let me go to Richmond South Choir over here. Well, well, can I tell you this? That if you are a man or woman of color and you live in these divided states of America, then you know firsthand what it's like to be harassed and helpless. You see, young preachers, young teachers, listen to me. Y y young boys, you can't even wear a hoodie with Skittles in your pocket without somebody wanting to harass you. You can't even take a good jog without somebody wanting to harass you. You can't even be in your own house eating cereal without somebody wanting to harass you. <laughs> Is there anybody now who felt harassed and helpless? Well, there's good news for you. <laughs> there's good news that Jesus sees you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good news is he sees you and he has compassion on you. <laughs> but there's one thing that Jesus also notices. <laughs> you see, Pastor G. Wesley Hardy, not only does he see our condition, <laughs> that we've been harassed and helpless, but he also sees the root of our problem. Aren't you glad we serve a God who gets down to the root of our issues? We got to stop creating sermons based on folk symptoms. I heard Bishop say it whenever he prays, he doesn't go down to handle the symptom. He's trying to get to the root of the problem and Jesus gets down to the root of the problem and he says they are like shepherds sheep without a shepherd Jesus says the root of their issue is that they don't have me in their life the root of their issue is that they are unshepherd sheep is there anybody in here who remembers what their life Life was like when they didn't have Jesus as their shepherd. Is there anybody in here who remembers how vulnerable you felt, how lonely you felt, how 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 abused you felt, without guidance you felt, all because you didn't have a shepherd? Well, you ought to know how the people felt then to have no shepherd. Thank you, Jesus. Well, what happens in the text 
is that Matthew goes from using a simile about the sheep uh, to a metaphor about the harvest. I, I wish I could really tell y'all the difference between a simile and metaphor, but there's some educated folk in the room. I'm sure you know the difference between a simile and a metaphor. Uh, Matthew gives us a simile. He tells us we are like sheep without a shepherd. And he goes into a metaphor of what Jesus said. Jesus said the harvest it is plentiful but the laborers are a few. He said I ask the Lord of the harvest to therefore send out workers into his harvest field. Y'all sit down. I need to break this down real quick. Well, Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. In other words, Elder Baker, he was telling us that there were some unshepherd folks who were ready to receive a word. There's some unshepherd folks who were ready to be introduced to Jesus. Can I tell you something? Nowhere in the Bible will it tell you to go into the church and be saved. It's not in there. In fact, what the Bible says, it says to go to the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in so that my house may be filled. I got to talk to the pastors for a second about that parable that Jesus gave because we use that parable for evangelism. Where's my evangelism president? But the problem is we've been using the scripture incorrectly. You say, what are you saying, general? We told our saints to go to the hedges and highways and compel them to come in so your church could be filled. That's not what the scripture says. This is about kingdom work. We're not to go out and try to fill just your church. The problem is you worried about your local house and you ought to be building God's house. The problem is this is why pastors are walking around depressed, walking around upset because they walk in their church and don't see nobody. Well, close your eyes and preach the kingdom of God. Yes, I want you to know that you got to steal. Send them out, but let them know that they're doing kingdom work. Let them know that they're trying to get them in God's house. Yes, can I tell you, Jesus said in John the 14th chapter, Missionary Griffin, uh, he said, in my father's house are uh, many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I'm going to go and prepare a place. Who are you preparing it for, Jesus? For all the ones that you proclaim the gospel to. Uh, and if I go hey, and prepare a place for you, I'm going to come back again and receive you to myself. Yes, Lord. But can I tell you this? When Jesus said it, just like in your church, there's some doubters. There was a doubter around Jesus. His name was Thomas. Thomas said, wait a minute, Lord. We heard what you said, but we don't know which way to go. How will we get there? Jesus said, look, man, I am the way. I am truth. Life, no man can get to the Father but by me. What are you saying, in General? It's time that you and I preach the good news of the kingdom. If we're gonna reach those who are unshepherd, we need to tell them about the good shepherd. Peter called him the great shepherd. Peter said he was a bishop of souls. Somebody said he was wonderful. Counselor, my God, Prince of Peace. Yes, Lily of the Valley, bright and morning star. Yeah! Hallelujah. You see, that's, that 
that's what they called him. <laughs> but I call him a cool breeze <laughs> on a hot summer day. <laughs> I call him a reconciler <laughs> of my marriage. <laughs> I call him a builder <laughs> of his church. <laughs> I call him my friend. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> I got 12.51 on the clock, but let me do it like this. I know some folk are saying, wait a minute, Pastor General, wait, wait. You're saying, I have the Lord Jesus as my Savior. Wait a minute, Brother Pastor, and uh, I've been faithful to him, <laughs> and he is my shepherd. Uh, but, but I still cry sometimes. <laughs> And I still have my body wrapped in pain. And there's some times that the enemy tries to sneak in my brain and mess with me. Oh, Pastor General, what do you have to say about me? Well, I would rather go through life's ups and downs. I would rather go through life's peaks and valleys. I would rather go through peace and a pandemic with the shepherd than without the shepherd. Yes, yes. I would rather have Jesus in the middle of it all. Yes, there's anybody here who would rather have Jesus you see, when you're going through, hey, Lord, you can say like Job. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You can say like the psalmist, I, I've been afflicted. It was good that I was afflicted, because then I learned, I learned your statutes. You can say like Paul in his letter to the church at Philippi. Paul said, I have learned in whatsoever state I am in therewith to be content. Yes, you can say, you can say like David, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want and because he's my shepherd, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He, he restoreth my soul. He leads me in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea. Somebody say, yeah, though I walk in the valley, I will fear no evil. Why, David? Because the shepherd is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. He even, the shepherd, even prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He even anoints my head with oil. In New Orleans, they say Earl. He anoints my head with Earl. Hey, hey, hey. And my cup, it runneth over. And surely, surely, surely goodness and mercy will follow me. How long? As long as I'm with the shepherd, all the days, Pyro, all the days, all the days of my life. Yes. Now somebody praise God, because you got a shepherd. Praise him, because he made a way for you. Praise him, because he dried your tears. Praise him, because he put money in your pocket. Praise him. He put a clap on that Sunday. Hey, a clapping in your hands. Praise him. He put food on your table. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. I got to get ready to get out of here. Uh, but 
before I go, Bishop Chase, I've been preaching a long time. And I thought about that part that talked about workers. And I heard somewhere that this was the 12th annual workers conference. Are there any workers in the room? Are there any workers online? Yes, this is not the title holders conference. Hello, somebody. This is uh, the workers conference. Where are the workers? Where are the workers? Some folk are waiting for a title before they'll go to work. But where are, where are the workers? I'm looking for workers. You see, in my house, there in my church rather, there's another label we give, and it's called lay leader. You see, I had to go to the Lord, and I prayed for more workers, but Elder Bennett, he didn't send me more elders. He said, look, General, they in front of you. You're supposed to develop the ones you got. I said, thank you, Lord. He gave me lay leaders. He gave me folks who had a desire to work for the Lord. Where are the workers? If you a worker, wave your hand. I need to see where the workers at. Are you ready to go to work? The Bible says the harvest it's plentiful, but the laborers are few. Where are where are the workers? Bishop Chase, Bishop Chase, can I tell you a story? I just want to use you as an example real quick. You see, Bishop Chase, he went to work in 2006 in a country of Jamaica. He went to work every day, laying hands on the sick, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, baptizing those who needed to be baptized, preaching a gospel message that saved souls in every tongue. Lady Candace, it was 2006, but he didn't get the title until 2017. Watch this. I said the work happened in 2006, but he didn't get the title until 2017. Let me do some quick math. That's 11 years had to pass by. Can you imagine what it was like to be somebody? Ah, Dr. Nicholson, he can relate. 22 general assembly sessions, knowing you're doing the work, but not yet hearing your name. 22 general assembly sessions, paying attention to the beginning of the program, listening out for the secretary of the general board, listening for your name. 22 general assemblies. Well, Bishop Chase went to 22 general assemblies, never heard his name, but here's the part that blessed me. He left 22 general assemblies and went back to work. I said he went back to work. And then one day, one day, one day, they said, tell you what, we've seen your faithfulness. Tell you what, now it's time to give you a title to match the work that you have done. What are you saying in general? I'm saying let's go to work. Let's not worry about our titles. Let's not worry about how we recognize. Let's go to work. There's un <laughs> unshepherd sheep who are ready. Hand me that. Who are ready. Hand me it to me. Give it to me. To be reached. Unshepherd sheep. Yes. Unshepherd sheep. I'm on time. It's red. Let me know it's time to close. I only got three minutes, 31 seconds. And since I'm on time, I don't believe in closing a message without talking about the cross. Because it was at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light.
that was at the cross with Jesus saved me. Do you know him? The good shepherd Jesus, he decided to hang up high and stretch out wide just for you. If you didn't need a savior, he wouldn't have came, but he knew you needed him. So he left heaven in its gloriousness and he took on a body. Yes, and he came down to provide an example. And I'm glad that he chose me. Yeah, he chose me. Yes, to preach his word. Oh, yes. Can I tell you this? I went to my class and I asked my class, I said, what has God called you to do? Lady Keisha, you remember me asking that question. I said, where do you see yourself working in ministry? Uh, oh, hallelujah. Well, the class's response, I was so overjoyed. The class's response, I was so happy to hear what they had to say. Because not one of the members said that they were called to a title. They were called to a purpose. I was so happy because they understood that work comes first. Work precedes the title. I know what I'm talking about because God called me to go to work. And I'm glad, I'm glad that he chose me. Now I got to tell y'all this. In my last minute, 25 seconds, I want you to understand Hallelujah, Jesus. I want you to understand that when you're working, when you're working, don't get angry about what's going on around you. This part of the harvest field is for you, but the whole harvest belongs to God. Hallelujah. The whole harvest belongs to God. We're going to have a general assembly meeting. Don't you get upset when you see other folk uh, in multiple positions. I said, don't get upset when you see other folk uh, in multiple positions. Why are they there? Why? Because the workers are few. You all raise your hand and you said, I'm a worker. Uh, stand on your feet. Clap your hand and give God praise. We got 10 more seconds to praise him. Yeah, I got this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're done. We're done. We're done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen, I know you're excited about your relationship with the Lord, and you should be. But with that same energy, you ought to have some compassion for the unshepherd sheep. If you remember where you were and what the Lord did for you, uh, then you should have that same energy in his harvest field when you go to work and introduce him to the one who gives you joy. Introduce him to the one who gives you peace. Introduce him to the one that you love. Hallelujah. I want to pray with you because there may be someone here who doesn't know the Lord as their personal Savior. You may have said, Pastor, look, I'm that unshepherd sheep. I'm the one that you were talking about right there. And uh, I don't have anybody to lead me or guide me or to show me the way. If that's you and you're in the room, throw your hand up. If you're online, you know how we do it, Perfect the Saints. When you're online, will you message real quick? I'll read every message and I'll get back to you. You can message me. Since you're on Facebook Live, you can message me. And I'll respond right back to you. 
But if you're in the room and you're here, just throw your hand up real quick. I know it's a workers' conference, but this is still about salvation and saving souls and soul winning. Amen. Then you all have a personal relationship with God, but maybe you have sickness in your body. Jesus was traveling, and after he was preaching and proclaiming the gospel, the scripture said that he was healing them of all manner of disease and sicknesses. And so you may be struggling with something right now in your body. If that's you, throw your hand in the air real quick. Amen. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands. Uh, it's COVID season, so we have to pray it a different kind of way. It's all right. It's all right. God can touch you right where you are. Right where you are. If you need healing, just reach up for it real quick. Hallelujah. I believe he can touch you. I believe he can touch you and heal your body. I feel my back is now feeling feeling real good, which means somebody walked in with some back pain and now it's being relieved because that's my gift. I feel that. Hallelujah. You ought to praise him, that one with that back pain that God just took from you. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Your mind is in worry. That's a sickness too. You're depressed. You're worried about your bills. If you're not ashamed, just throw your hand real quick up and say, that's me, that's me. Pray for my finances. If that's me, pray for me that I become a better steward for the Lord. I see your hands. I see your hands. You might be surprised to get something from me in the mail because I saw your hands. You never know where your blessing is coming from. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. I came to tell you he's your shepherd means he'll give you everything that you need. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, because you are our God, we thank you. We worship you. God, thank you for being our good shepherd. Thank you for being the great shepherd, God. And we're praying now, God, for all those who had a need. The hundred or so watching us online right now, God, we know you can be with them right now. Now, you are omnipresent. You're here with us and there with them all at the same time. Touch their bodies, speak peace to their mind, lighten their loads, help their finances. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands. Were you blessed tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. At this time, if you would grab a $20 seed real quick, hallelujah, I want to sow into the jurisdiction if you would. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Just grab a $20 seed. Our usher is going to grab the container for us and come around. I believe in seeding. I believe in giving. And I believe that that's why God keeps giving me more is because I keep giving it back to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Just grab your seed. Grab your seed. One of my members, I know he's watching us online, came to my house today. He said, Pastor, I just want to give you this. Amen. I said, thank you. And he gave me a Kojic handshake. Uh, and I want to sow what he gave to me into this moment. Because I believe God is able. Now, if you don't have it, that $20, you say, I ain't got it. But look, I would give it if I did have it. If that's you, if that's you, throw your hand up real quick. If that's you, say, look, I just ain't got it, Doc. But I would if I had it. If your heart is right. Hallelujah. 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 Is that you? Who is that? Amen. Amen. The ushers are coming. Thank you, God. MJ, play something a little upbeat that I can sing to. Take us back. He said, I don't know what you know. Go back. I can find you. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Cash app, that's right. You can use a cash app. You see it on the screen, Kojic, V-A-4-T-H. Those online, so into this at this moment. So into this moment. We thank you, God. Hallelujah.
God is able. God is able. He's been doing it for me. I couldn't make his service last night because our company won another multi-million dollar contract that I went after. Hallelujah. And so God is just keeps doing it for me. He just keeps doing it. I'm just going to keep giving. I'm going to keep giving. I like that. Tried and true. Hey, hey. And with thanksgiving. Y'all know it. Sanctuary for you. Said, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, yeah, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary oh, for you. Say praise the Lord. What a message. What a message. Everybody's worked on the theme. Amen. The Lord said the same. I'll say something about it tomorrow night, I guess. Unless he give me another message. I give y'all the theme. Y'all work on it. Somebody said it's harvest time. Yes, sir. And he talked about those that needed to be here. Neither the shepherd. God knows there's so many, so many that need. We get ready to depart this place, but the da 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 Thank you, Mommy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. When he was calling for those that had physical problems, I, I begin to feel my hands getting just as warm. Come on, no, no, no. And if, if everybody that got healed, raise your hand. Everybody that got healed when when they was made. Stand where you are. Let me see you. If you got healed when he was making that appeal. Okay, they're not the only ones that raised their hand, but these two. If you read my book, you'll find out the preacher needs healing. Come on, mama, my citation. Hallelujah. Lord, we oh, mm, 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 mm. come stand right here, Bishop Chase, young Elder Chase, stand right there. Now everybody stand. Hallelujah. Come on out of us. Come on out Come on And he touched me. you the miracle worker in the knocks in the lonely and there were some other hands that went up Lord but tonight 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 hallelujah we give you all the glory and all the praise and decree and declare that is done in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Give me a mic right quick, sir. Thank you, Jesus. 
Somebody tell him thank you. Come on up. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. What was it? Give him that mic. What was it, sir? What was it? For the last couple of months, it's been a great concern to me. My wife would tell you, I'm praying and I believe I got my healing tonight. I was weighing 215 pounds. I weighed myself the other day and I really started getting troubled in my mind. I'm down to 195. And last time I started losing weight like this, you know, Bishop, I went through a terrible thing. But I believe tonight I am healed. Lift your hands, Bishop. Keep on. The miracle is done. We say it in faith. I hear the Holy Spirit say, the miracle is done. And get shaken, my receiving it. In Jesus' name. And he touched me. And he made me whole. Oh. So at the by the end of this past football season, I've been having bad back pains, neck pains that You've been having bad back pains. Back pains and neck pains. Uh, went through the chiropractor ever since last December. Nothing seemed to help. And I've been worried about it for, for a while now. But coming into service today, I could barely move my neck. Could barely move my back. Trying to work out, can't do it. But when he said, was there anybody in here that had a back pain? And he believed that if you believe it, that you will be healed. It instantly went away. I can't, I've never been able to move my neck or my back like this move in a it, long son. time. Go and move it. Go ahead and move it. Move your neck. Your pain gone. It's gone. Somebody ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Go your way, praising him. Praise him. Somebody lift those hands and worship in this house. Yeah, come on now, say, Christian. Thank you, Lord. Somebody, you've had a stomach condition that's been kind of severe. I don't know if you're watching or if you're here, but uh, it's yours. The healing is yours if you want it. And he touched me. If that's you, raise your hand. Let me see where you are. And he may come, sir. Me. Oh. Pastor Hines. Yes, stand right there, sir. Not yet. Mm. Take your mask down, son, and tell him thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 
Somebody ought to help him praise him. Somebody ought to help him praise him. Somebody help him praise him. Help him praise him. Give him that mic. In the name of Jesus. Uh, for the last month, I have been experiencing some uh, irregular, uh, not so much pain, but at nighttime, I would, uh, I can barely sleep because it seems like every time I eat, I'm going to regurgitate everything back up. I went to the doctor on last week and they gave me uh, medicine for acid reflux. And I actually have a doctor's appointment on Tuesday and they're going to send me to the GI specialist because they're suspecting it may be my gallbladder. Um, but we believe in God that by the time I get to the specialist, they're not going to see nothing. So uh, I pressed my way tonight. I've been up all night. I actually had to take off work today because I was in so much pain this morning. And I came here this morning and I left and I ate. You came one, this morning. I came this morning and I left. You're in uh, so much pain. I was kind of getting in a lot of pain right up in here. And um, like I said, they've been trying to diagnose it, saying it's acid reflux or saying it's GERD, saying it's my gallbladder. But I'm believing by Tuesday, it's going to be nothing. So, what are you in there? Are you in pain now? No, I'm not in no pain. No, I'm not no, in no, no pain. pain. No pain. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you. Because he wouldn't have called it out if he wasn't going to do it. So he called it out and said somebody had some fear on stomach problems. Somebody give God a praise. Go your way praising him, sir. Go your way praising him. He picked you out. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all ready to go? Amen. Amen. Get my book. If you haven't gotten it. Back, there's some back there in the bookstore. You know, I just do what God tell me to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Stan. He ain't told me nothing, so we must go on home. Yes, sir. Now, this is your season. And I say unto you, the thing that you've been worried about, I will bring it out. And I will open that door for it's closed now, but it's going to open. Lord, by my sake, keep it, Okay, you've been waiting for a letter. We got to, the door's going to open. Hallelujah. Well, lift your hand. Somebody, that, that applies to somebody you know, out there in here. God says it's going to open for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God, mm, 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 mm. thank you, Jesus. Yeah, my nah. Is that anybody in this house? Yeah, my yeah, but Tisha, if it's so, lift your hand high. I know who you are. Let him open that door for you. If not, you're out there you're somewhere. Thank you, Jesus. Because God is a way maker. When the door seems closed, he's going to open it for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this night. We thank you for tomorrow, Lord, when we will hear from our, 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 our supervisor, Lord. God, unknown, I give our unknown. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, as we worship together and come to the last day of this brief meeting, God, how come I not show yourself strong? And we ask it in Jesus' name. And somebody say amen. Amen. Saints, remain where you are.